Who doesn't like a wedding? The romance, the beautiful clothes, the tears. And that's just the men. A lot of women, at least that's what TV shows us, dream of a big wedding. One that they have planned out for years with big flowing dresses, delicious food, slightly embarrassing speeches, the drunk uncle in the corner, and the car speeding off with a just married sign on the back. This is all a bit of a cliché, but clichés have to start somewhere, and a lot of people like the tradition. I've been to all kinds of weddings, those with no alcohol being served, which was a bit of a downer, a wedding with no alcohol being served, which was one of the best parties I've ever been to, weddings in churches, weddings on mountaintops, weddings on beaches, those where the future wife walks serenely down the aisle, and another where the bridal party comes dancing in joyously. Hi, my name is Alex, and this is The English Aeneer, where we look into what people say in English and break down why they say it. Before we start, I'd just like to ask that if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and pressing the like button. You can also hit the notification bell and YouTube will let you know when a new video is posted. So one of the things that always made me curious was the vocabulary that we generally associate it surrounds these occasions. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's dive straight in. Engage. Engage or engagement. This means to promise or pledge to marry someone. In the past, particularly among the upper and the middle classes, it was a serious thing to be engaged. And if you broke the engagement, you could be sued in court. What do you think should happen to gifts given during the engagement if it is broken off? Like the ring. Should it be returned to the giver if the engagement is called off? Or is it seen as a gift that was freely given? Give your opinion in the comment section below. Fiancé or fiancé. The woman who is engaged is called the fiancé with the extra e, and the man the fiancé. The pronunciation is the same, although the spelling is not, and you can blame the French for that one. The English are already guilty of so much in terms of spelling and grammar in their language. We have a lot of words for to promise in English. We can say to pledge, to engage, to vow, to swear, to commit, to make an oath, to betroth, among many others. To become a fiancé means that you have entered into a contract to get married in the future. In the West, the engagement ring is worn on the right hand, and men are expected to spend about three months of their salary. Uh, do you think this is too much? Is it about right or not nearly enough? Marriage and wedding. What's the difference? Generally speaking, the wedding is the ceremony where the couple say their vows and they officially become husband and wife. And often this includes the reception or the party that follows to celebrate the young couple's nuptials. The word nuptials comes from the Latin nubere, meaning to wed. Curiously, we say that the man marries a woman or vice versa, but also that an official or a priest marries them. Also, the verb to marry and to wed basically mean the same thing. A marriage, unlike a wedding, is seen as the relationship after the wedding. For example, you might say they have a very stable or turbulent marriage. Stag party, hen night, Bachelor party or bachelorette party. Before the final sentence is carried out, I mean the commitment is made, the man and the woman frequently celebrate their last night of freedom. I mean, you know what I mean, <coughs> with a big party. A bachelor doesn't just refer to a qualification from a university, but to a young unmarried man. In the US, the bachelor party, or the female equivalent bachelorette party, is a calm, sober event where people talk about current events and the weather. 
Of course it's not. It's a drunken, uncontrolled beer fest or wine fest, which for some reason often takes place in Las Vegas. In other places, this is called a stag party, a stag being the male deer, or a hen party for women. Bride, groom, husband and wife. Bride is an old Germanic word meaning the woman about to be married. Bridesmaids, by definition, should be unmarried girls or women, as the word maid means an unmarried woman. In today's usage, to groom means to brush and take care of or to help to train horses. It's also the man who is about to get married, but there is little or no connection between them. Of course, nowadays there may be two grooms or two brides. The word wife, originally whiff, just meant a female. Over time, this was changed to whiff man, which was the origin of the word woman. In the beginning, husband from the Old Norse husbondi just referred to the male head of the house, the hus, and only coupled with the word wife in the late 1200s. A vow or to vow. These are the promises made by the bride and groom in front of witnesses to stay married till death do us part. Promises kept at least 50% of the time in the West. We often hear the word a vow of silence referring to a religious order where uh, they promise not to speak. Marriage vows generally don't include this promise. The word originated from the Latin votum, from where we also get the word, yes, you guessed it, to vote. In other words, a promise to support a candidate. Church, aisle and altar. If the ceremony takes place in a church, from an old Saxon word kirk, the bride will walk down the aisle to the altar, where her future husband will be standing if he hasn't already fainted. The aisle was originally the passage running along the side of the church, but this meaning has changed, at least in secular terms, to mean the central gap between benches, like between seats in an airplane or the theater, or between shelves in a supermarket. The altar may be a mix of the Latin words meaning a high place and also another place where sacrifices were made to the gods and burnt. During the speeches at the reception, it's common to raise your glass to the couple's health. We call this a toast. But what has this got to do with a hot, often burnt slice of bread? It refers to an old custom of taverns or inns placing toast in a cup of ale, or even the habit of adding spiced toast to give added flavour to drinks, just as a woman adds flavour and spice to life. Honeymoon One theory is that in medieval times, newlywed couples would drink mead, a kind of honey drink on their wedding day which would bring them good luck for a month, a moon cycle. Another idea is that it described the new relationship's sweetness and how long this sweetness would usually last. Couple The word couple comes from the Latin copula, meaning to join or to bind two things together. Just two. So, if your wife tells you she's going to Las Vegas for a couple of days for a bachelorette party and to not call her under any circumstances, when she's actually going there for five days, you can lose your temper with her and correct her grammar. Well, I hope you enjoyed that or at least learned something from the video. If you have any theme you would like me to explore for the origin of words, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll see what I can do. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Well, actually, you will see me as I'll be on the screen, but that is just an expression. You know what I mean.